Welcome to the Best Coast Shire Council Report, your weekly update on council news and events. Hi, I'm Lauren Grills. And I'm Steve Fury. Welcome to this week's show where we'll be talking about work starting on the Surf Parade shared path in Inverloch, a recent review of council's executive and management team and council's community satisfaction survey. But first, an artwork that you could say is groundbreaking in New Haven. It certainly is, Lauren. If you paid a visit to Graydon's Reserve in New Haven lately, you would have seen the incredible street art by Melbourne-based artist Ulla Taylor. Now, Ulla was Bass Coast Artist in Residence during Creative Gippsland's month-long celebration of the arts all throughout May, which was themed Come and Play All of May. I'm sure everyone's heard of that. Hosted by the New Haven Residence Group, Ulla completed an amazing rock pool artwork in chalk on the basketball court at the reserve and also worked with the New Haven Primary School kids to teach them about the technique called screeving, and that's to draw with chalk on the footpath. There's been plenty of people dropping by the reserve to have their photo taken in the 3D-looking rock pool. So make sure you pay to visit before it disappears. Now, speaking of footpaths, construction of the Air Creek pedestrian bridge and foreshore shared pathway along Surf Parade between Abbott Street and Air Creek in Inverloch is set to begin. The installation of the pedestrian bridge will begin from the 13th of July and is anticipated to be finished by early August. While the construction of the shared pathway will begin after the bridge has been finished, it is expected to be completed by September. And that's all depending on how much wet weather we get, of course. While the bridge is being installed, we will need to close a road, but it'll only be for one to two days, depending on what the contractor needs to do there. But they will be working to minimise the disruption to Surf Parade. If you drive around that area often, you'll need to find a detour while that road's closed, and we'll have detour signs in place so you'll be able to get around the works. Now, we do understand that this may cause some inconvenience, and we ask everyone to please be patient during these times. If you'd like some more information about the works, you can contact Council's infrastructure delivery team on the numbers at the end of the show. Moving on, you may be aware that Council has been undertaking a number of service reviews as part of its commitment to the community to run as efficiently as possible, especially now with the introduction of rate capping. Part of this has included identifying opportunities for improvement and cost savings that have now totaled over $3 million in the last two years. Now, we're making further savings following a recent review of the executive and management team and a reduction of that team by one and a half full-time positions. That's going to take effect from this August and will achieve another $150,000 in savings for the 2016-17 financial year. Some recent management announcements gave us a chance to review the executive and management team structure with Mark Brady's role, and he's the General Manager of Governance and Organisation Development. His role is being reduced to part-time. There's also the retirement of Council's Manager of Information Services, Brian Alden. His role will be absorbed into the existing governance manager role to form a governance and information systems department. Now, the bottom line is that this won't have any impact on service delivery to our community, but we'll see savings of $150,000 in staffing costs. Every year, the annual Community Satisfaction Survey is conducted by JWS Research and coordinated by the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning on behalf of Victorian councils. This year, 400 randomly selected Bass Coast residents were were surveyed by telephone on a number of issues and voiced their satisfaction levels with Council's overall performance and a range of services. We've recently received our results and they're available online, so if you'd like to check them out, you can download them at basscoast.vic.gov.au forward slash CSS. Now, while you're visiting our website, why not sign up to our email list for Council's quarterly newsletter, Coastel? From this December, we'll be sending the newsletter electronically. So to make sure you receive a copy in your inbox, simply visit basscoast.vic.gov.au forward slash Coastel, at C-O-A-S-T-E-L-L, and register online. Now, of course, it's not totally electronic, as not everyone's online. So if you prefer to keep receiving Coastel as a printed hard copy, please call our media communications officer, Simone Shaw on 2703 and let her know. Due to the caretaker period leading up to this year's local government elections, we won't be printing a spring issue, but we'll be back again with a bumper summer edition in early December. And just before we go, don't forget Council will be holding its June Ordinary Meeting at the Council Chamber at the Civic Centre in Wanthaggy next week on Wednesday the 22nd of June from 5 o'clock. The big item on the agenda this month is the adoption of the 2016-17 budget. Everyone is welcome to attend and you can hear the latest decisions being made
decision made by council as they happen. Uh, thanks for that. This is all we have time for today. So if you have any more questions or need more information about anything we've mentioned, give us a call on 1300 B Coast. That's 1300 226 278 or 035671 You can also keep up to date with us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Bass Coast Shire or follow us on Twitter at our handle, which is at Bass Coast. Or you can visit our website, basscoast.vic.gov.au and be sure to tune in next week for more Council News. The Bass Coast Shire Council Report is broadcast on Tuesday mornings at 9.30, Thursday afternoons at 4.30 and on Saturday mornings at 10 on your community station 3MFM. Audio and transcript is also available from our website, basscoast.vic.gov.au.